Today I will talk about the history of Trieste, the capital of Friuli Venezia Giulia, on a hill overlooking the Gulf of Trieste, joining the Adriatic Sea and Slovenia nearby, and Croatia 30 kilometres away. This is a city of major history, dramatic violence, Cold War tension, literature, music, culture, architecture, and of course excellent coffee. The area was inhabited by Illyrian tribes, Balkan tribes. The Veneti from Veneto, who named the town Tegesta, meaning market. Then the Carni, a tribe from the Eastern Alps. And then the Roman Republic. Roman Tergesta flourished and expanded due to its transport links and its deep water port. Emperor Augustus walled the city and Traian built the theatre in the second century. There's evidence of Roman Empire villas, health facilities and, and beautiful gardens which demonstrate this as a playground for the Romans and it didn't hurt that the slopes had vines. In 539 the Byzantines annexed Trieste to the Exarchate of Ravenna before later invasions by the Lombards in 567 and the Franks. In 788 Charlemagne placed Trieste under the Duke of Friuli and from 1081 Trieste was part of the Holy Roman Empire. In the 13th and 14th centuries Trieste competed with the Republic of Venice, even causing Venice to briefly invade it in 1283 and 1368. In 1381, Venice finally withdrew its claim to Trieste and representatives of Trieste immediately lobbied Leopold III of Habsburg, Duke of Austria, to take Trieste as part of his domain. And they were successful. Trieste retained its autonomy under Habsburg rule, but really lost trade to Venice and nearby Balkan Ragusa. In 1463, some Istrian communities pleaded for Venice to attack Trieste, but Pope Pius II, a former bishop of Trieste, prevented this. Nonetheless, Venetian forces advanced to within three miles of the city. Holy Roman Emperor Frederick III sacked Trieste in 1468. During the War of the League of Cambrai, the Venetians retook Trieste in 1508 before the Habsburg Empire returned. In 1719, Trieste became a free port of the Habsburg Empire, and this was a very prosperous time. Attracted by the wealth, Slovenes, Serbs and Croats began to settle in the area in the 18th and 19th century. Trieste now fell to the French Empire, losing its autonomy until the Austrian Empire returned, made it a free imperial city in 1813. This was Austria's main trading port and a centre of shipbuilding from 1860 autonomy again. In the Austro-Hungarian era, Trieste became a leading European city in terms of commerce, its coffee industry spread thrived leaving a legacy of many cafes and it is claimed to be the coffee capital of Italy although I would respectfully suggest Naples might have something to say about that. Trieste and Fiume were important naval bases for the Imperial Royal Navy and the advent of the Austrian Southern Railway in 1857 meant Tr Trieste now traded in huge amounts of coal. Italian irredentists in Trieste congregated at Caffè Tomaseo and the tension culminated in 1882 with the failed attempt by Guillermo Obadan to assassinate Emperor Franz Joseph. Obadan was executed and the emperor never returned to Trieste. In the early 20th century, Trieste was a significant part of the Austrian Riviera, a thriving cosmopolitan city swelled by artists and philosophers including James Joyce, Italo Svevo, Sigmund Freud, Zofka Kverde, Dragotin Keter, Ivan K. 
Kanka, Scipio Slatapa, and Umberto Saba. Italy eventually joined World War I on the side of the Allied powers, induced by a promise of territory in the Austrian littoral. Italy now annexed the city of Trieste at the end of the war as the Austro-Hungarian Empire collapsed. The local non-Italian population was forced to undergo a period of forced Italianisation as fascist Italy discriminated against them. Italian fascists and Slovene activists maintained a tense atmosphere in Trieste. The University of Trieste and the Victory Lighthouse, Faro della Vittoria, were built in the 1920s and the 1930s. In 1943, the city was occupied by the Wehrmacht troops as Mussolini was deposed. A concentration camp was built at the Riziera di San Saba in 1944. About 25,000 Jews and partisans were interrogated and tortured there. A few thousand were executed and the rest were deported. Trieste suffered extensive damage at the hands of Italian and Yugoslav partisan raids and heavy Allied bombings. In 1944 and 1945, around the oil refineries, the port and marshalling yard, and consequently a large number of people did die. The Yugoslav Partisans Dalmatian Corps retook most of Trieste except the castle of San Giusto. Here, the German garrison refused to surrender to the Yugoslavs, fearing retribution. They instead s surrendered to New Zealand troops, leaving the city occupied by two different set of troops. Pretty awkward. During the 40 days of Trieste, Yugoslav partisans did exact retribution against hundreds of local Italians and Slovenes, known as the Foybe massacres. Some were jailed while others were executed to the anger and the frustration of the Allied forces. Nonetheless, the Yugoslav command pressed its claim for sovereignty of the wealthy city and the strategic seaport. This was the height of the Cold War between the USA and the USSR, where each wanted to avoid the strategic seaport of Trieste falling to the other side. There were border skirmishes between the troops and disputes over the use of airspace. This was seriously tense in the nuclear age. Yugoslav leader Josip Broz Tito and Field Marshal Alexander agreed to withdraw Yugoslav forces and leave Trieste under British and US military control. Known as the Morgan Line, this separated the Anglo-American Zone A from the Yugoslav Zone B, and this separated troops until the advent of the Free Territory of Trieste in 1947, something which, which everyone hated. President Truman's agonised over the conflicting claims for territory. Both Italy and Yugoslavia rejected a joint governor. It was true that Italy was in actual control of the city. It is true there was a persecuted Slav minority population, but it was also true that Italy had been on the losing side of the war. The Allied military government, AMG, struggled to control these territories of Trieste, Gorizia and Pola. The West feared Trieste might choose to defect to the other side of the Iron Curtain. Tito had now fallen out with Stalin, and later Stalin's death happened, so now USSR had no interest in Trieste. On this basis, the USA, France and the UK pragmatically recommended Trieste to be returned to Italy. In 1954, most of Zone A, including Trieste, joined Italy after a referendum, while Zone B joined Yugoslavia. As the Iron Curtain collapsed, Slovenia, Croatia, Hungary, the Czech Republic and Slovakia joined the EU, and that only increased the amount of trade passing through the port of Trieste. The port of Trieste now supplies 40% of Italy's coffee. 
the cultural heart of Trieste is on the high street, Via San Nicolo, which bristles with cafes and restaurants. At number 33, James Joyce, the writer, lived and wrote part of his work with Dubliners. Number 31, a cafe frequented by Italian novelist Umberto Saba. Number 32, where James Joyce taught Italo Svevo. A number of famous people are linked to Trieste. Stendhal, the French author, served as French consul in Trieste. Francesco Illy, a Hungarian, was a coffee entrepreneur. Cesare Maldini, decorated Italian soccer football player and manager, and also father to Paolo, was born here. George Dolenz, father of Mickey Dolenz of the Monkeys, was born in Trieste. Things to see in Trieste. Piazza Unita d'Italia, an Austrian-built main square with stunning sea views which is also occasionally used as a concert venue. The Austrian-built Miramar Castle. You can view the mosaics at Trieste Cathedral. By Cola Seafront, go for a walk and look at the boats. The Castle San Giusto, part built by Frederick III, Holy Roman Emperor. Arco di Riccardo, a Roman gate, which legend claims Richard the Lionheart passed under. Enjoy the Grand Canal, built by a Venetian. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. That way you can enjoy more of this content. Thank you. Click here for some more videos you may be interested in.